Imagine, if you will, a world lost to time. A world of towering behemoths and bizarre beasts, where the ground trembles beneath the tread of giants and the skies are filled with the shrieks of leathery-winged terrors. This was the world of the dinosaurs, the terrible lizards that ruled the Earth for over 160 million years. But then, in a cosmic instant, everything changed. A chunk of space rock the size of a small city came hurtling out of the heavens and slammed into the planet with the force of a billion atomic bombs. In the blink of an eye, the age of the dinosaurs came to a sudden and dramatic end, wiped out by a global catastrophe the likes of which the world had never seen. But here's the funny thing. Not everything died in that cataclysmic impact. While T-Rex and his titanic kin were busy going extinct, a scrappy bunch of underdogs managed to cling to life against all odds. These survivors would go on to inherit a brave new world, rising from the ashes of the dinosaurs' demise to become the ancestors of everything, from blue whales to hummingbirds to, well, us. So how did they do it? How did these lucky few manage to weather the worst disaster in Earth's history while the mighty dinosaurs were snuffed out like so many scaly candles? Let's dig into the nitty-gritty of what happened and see if we can unravel this prehistoric puzzle. First things first, let's set the stage for this epic extinction event. The date was approximately 66 million years ago, give or take a few hundred thousand years. The place was the Cretaceous period, a time when the world was a very different place than the one we know today. At this point in history, the continents were still in the process of splitting apart from the supercontinent of Pangaea. The climate was generally warmer and more humid than today, with higher sea levels and no permanent polar ice caps. Flowering plants were just starting to get a foothold, but much of the land was still dominated by cone-bearing trees and ferns. And then, there were the dinosaurs. These magnificent beasts had been going strong since the Triassic period, evolving into a dizzying array of forms to fill practically every ecological niche on land. From the massive, long-necked sauropods to the fleet-footed, sickle-clawed raptors, dinosaurs were the undisputed rulers of the terrestrial realm. But beneath the feet of these Mesozoic monarchs, change was stirring. A new breed of animals was starting to emerge from the shadows, the mammals. At this point, most mammals were still small, shrew-like creatures scurrying around in the underbrush. But they were steadily diversifying and evolving, biding their time until their moment in the sun would arrive. Little did they know, their big break was hurtling towards Earth at breakneck speed in the form of a monstrous space rock. The asteroid that spelled doom for the dinosaurs was no ordinary space pebble. It was a behemoth, roughly six miles in diameter, big enough to fill up a good chunk in New York City. When it slammed into the Earth near what is now the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico, it was traveling at speeds upwards of 45,000 miles per hour. The impact was, quite simply, the biggest kaboom in Earth's history, at least since the giant impact that formed the moon billions of years earlier. In an instant, millions of years worth of stored up kinetic energy was released in a blinding flash of light and heat. The immediate area around the impact site was vaporized on contact, leaving a gaping crater over 110 miles wide. Hundreds of cubic miles of pulverized rock were blasted into the atmosphere, raining back down as glowing spheres of molten glass called tektites. The force of the impact triggered magnitude 10 plus earthquakes that shook the planet like a rattle. Mega tsunamis hundreds of feet tall raced out from the crater, crashing onto coastlines and flooding low-lying. Wildfires ignited by the superheated debris raged across entire continents, turning lush forests into charred wasteland. But the worst was yet to come. As the dust and ash from the impact and fires began to spread through the atmosphere, they blocked out the sun's life-giving rays. Global temperatures plummeted as a pall of darkness descended on the world. Photosynthesis all but ceased, causing widespread starvation as the base of the food chain collapsed. To add insult to injury, the vaporized rock from the asteroid impact reacted with water vapor in the atmosphere to produce sulfuric acid rain, which fell in corrosive torrents across the globe. The ozone layer, which protects life from the sun's harmful ultraviolet radiation, was stripped away. 
For the dinosaurs, it was the end of the world as they knew it. But for some of their smaller, furrier contemporaries, it was the start of a new era. So, how did mammals and other animals manage to survive this global cataclysm while the dinosaurs went the way of the dodo? It turns out that a few key traits gave them a significant edge in the post-apocalyptic world. Number one, small size. In a world where resources were scarce and competition was fierce, being tiny was a big advantage. Smaller animals need less food and water to stay alive, which meant they could survive on the meager pickings available after the impact. They also had an easier time finding shelter from the harsh environmental conditions, whether it was in the nooks and crannies of rocks or the hollows of fallen trees. Many of the mammals that made it through the extinction were no bigger than a rat. These pint-sized survivors included early primates like the aptly named Purgatorius, which was about the size of a mouse and is thought to be one of our earliest ancestors. Other diminutive mammals like the shrew-like Chimelests and the hedgehog-like Peridans also managed to hang on, thanks in part to their small stature. Number two, adaptability. When the world around you is changing fast, the ability to roll with the punches is key. Animals that could adapt quickly to new environmental conditions, such as colder temperatures, less food, and different habitats, had a better chance of making it through the long, dark years after the impact. Many mammals were generalists, able to eat a wide variety of foods and live in different habitats. This flexibility allowed them to take advantage of whatever resources were available, rather than being tied to a single food source that might have vanished in the aftermath of the catastrophe. Some early primates, for example, had teeth adapted for eating both insects and fruit, which meant they had more options when the menu got sparse. Other animals had even more extreme adaptations for surviving lean times. Some small mammals, like the early primate Purgatorius, could enter into states of hibernation or torpor, a kind of deep sleep where the body's metabolism slows to a crawl. This allowed them to conserve energy and wait out the worst of the post-impact conditions, emerging when things got a little better. Number three, burrowing. When the sky has fallen and the world is on fire, sometimes the best thing to do is head underground. Many small mammals were burrowers, able to dig deep into the earth to create cozy, protected dens where they could ride out the worst of the impact's effects. These subterranean sanctuaries provided a vital refuge from the cold, acid rain, and other hazards of the post-apocalyptic world. They also offered protection from predators, which were likely just as desperate and hungry as everything else in those lean years. Some mammals, like the early multi-tubercolates, even had special adaptations for digging, such as strong forelimbs and claws. But mammals weren't the only burrowers to survive the extinction. Other animals, like some lizards and snakes, also took to the underground to wait out the worst of the impact winter. Even a few dinosaurs, like the small, feathered Alvarezsaurus, are thought to have been diggers, though sadly, their burrowing skills weren't enough to save them in the end. And finally, luck. Sometimes survival comes down to pure, dumb luck. Even the most well-adapted animal can't do much if it's in the wrong place at the wrong time, like standing right next to a giant asteroid when it hits. So it's likely that some animals simply had the good fortune to be located far from the impact site or in sheltered environments that offered some protection from the worst of the cataclysm. For example, animals living in deep sea trenches or underground caves might have been shielded from the initial blast and the ensuing global wildfires. Those living at higher latitudes, far from the tropics where the impact occurred, might have had a bit more time to adapt to the changing conditions. And some animals might have just been lucky enough to be in the right microhabitat, like a dense forest or a sheltered valley when the hammer fell. Of course, luck can only take you so far. Even the most fortuitous animals would have faced an uphill battle in the post-impact world, with challenges like starvation, predation, and disease stalking their every step. But sometimes, a little bit of luck can make all the difference between life and death. Over time, as the dust began to settle and the sun peeked out from behind the clouds of debris, these plucky survivors emerged to find a world ripe for the taking. With the dinosaurs out of the picture, there were suddenly all sorts of new ecological niches to exploit. Mammals, in particular, underwent an explosive radiation, evolving into a kaleidoscope of new forms to fill the gaps left by the vanished giants. 
Some took to the trees, becoming the ancestors of today's squirrels, monkeys, and lemurs. Others burrowed even deeper underground, giving rise to moles, gophers, and other subterranean specialists. Still others took to the skies as bats or dove into the oceans to become whales and dolphins. And somewhere along the line, a few of them even began to walk upright, master tools, and ponder their own origins. So, there you have it. The story about how a bunch of pipsqueak furballs managed to outlast the greatest beasts ever to walk the earth. It's a tale of survival against all odds, of life finding a way in the face of unimaginable destruction, and it's a powerful reminder that sometimes, the meek really do inherit the Earth. Or, at least what's left of it after the asteroid hits.